And now Russell's here. Hello, Russell. Hello. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. You yeah. have been busy. Yes, keeping off the streets. I uh, remember Nicola coming up and seeing me in, uh, at the press launch and she said, Russell, would like to talk to you about Doctor Who. Well, I went up to Jane Trans and went, hello, it's nice to meet you properly. And wouldn't it be my... Which, don't you think we should do Doctor Who? We should do it properly and make it marvellous and blah, 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 blah. And I went, that's great. That's fine. And she sort of went, oh yes, that's a nice idea, like they do. So I sort of walked away from that thinking, this is getting embarrassing now. That was it. And I remember taking the train back to London thinking, okay, this is it. It was literally that Linda Green press launch in the Lowry Hotel that forged the entire creation of Doctor Who. Originally, I, I didn't set out wanting to work behind the scenes. I wanted to be an actor. But I think Doctor Who was one of the big reasons I wanted to be an actor. So I suppose by default, it's a big reason why I wanted, why I ended up being in TV. Like the first stories, I used to sort of walk around and think up, you know, we always would play Daleks and Cybermen in, mm. in the yard. And I would think up stories, I used to draw all them. It was from Lorraine Hegarty and Jane Tranter. Head of BBC One and head of drama at the time. Head of drama. Yeah. And I mean, I had been nagging for years. Not nagging, but like whenever I met Jane Tranter, I'd say, oh, I want to do Doctor Who. So they didn't oh, bring it back right. because I'd been nagging. But when they decided to bring it back, my name was associated with it. It was automatically like, oh, Russell Davis wants to do that. And we want to work with Russell Davis. If I'm absolutely honest, I thought they'd never bring it back. And I thought as a genuine fan of it, it was my job in meeting the head of drama to say that someone should bring it back because they might do one day. And it'd probably be on BBC Three and be a disaster. But um, so I never, I was never that serious about it, to be honest, because I honestly thought it had had its day. See, its memory had just, just, degraded over the years and you, you know, it was you forget that in the 60s of Dalek Mania it was a massive program it was a huge and then doing Tom Baker's reign but it's hard is it because it was it just television tradition left it behind them. and plus people make a joke of science fiction anyway it's, you know, even they do it with this nice expensive version so it was ripe to be mocked I'm afraid with and also with science fiction more than anything else because I've, I do watch an awful I like television science fiction film science fiction and I think, in my opinion, I know a lot about it. And I, and, and, and I mean, even in terms of like colours and things like that, it's like wherever I can, I've banned gold and silver because that's just rubbish science fiction. If people walk onto a television set, and because gold you and think tinfoil, it's larvae. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's it's rubbish. It's yeah. the rubbish end of it. We've kept the essence of the original. The Doctor is still very much the same kind of character. I think the dynamic between the Doctor and his assistant has moved on somewhat because they're on a par with each other and they educate each other. And I'm not sure that that happened so much in previous, you know, episodes of Doctor Who. I think the diff one of the biggest differences is that it's a lot more domestic this Doctor Who, and we touch on on relationships and, and being at home and, and, and families and, and, and you know, it's, it's very interesting. But yeah, I mean, we're talking about things that are happening today. It's contemporary. We still go less to alien planets. Even when we do go to alien planets, I tend to like it set in a space station that feels like a factory or an office or a place of work. Rather than, um, I, think, I, think it's, I think only cinema can truly afford massive, great big alien landscapes. And even the most expensive, if you watch Heroes at the moment, they've just gone off to few Japan for six episodes. It's terrible. It's Orange County. You just sit there going, that's not feudal Japan. You've just gone into your backyard with a great big budget and it doesn't work. And I gather they themselves are like sitting there going, it can't work with the most expensive television budget. It looks like nonsense to go into a field or a quarry and say we're on an alien planet. It's, it's science fiction and it's worse. It's science fiction that's ready for people to take the piss out of it. At the time, we're reaching out, I said, Penelope Wilton to come and be in it, Simon Callow. They don't know, you know, those first, that first raft of guest stars we're enormously indebted to because now I think people know they'll come and have a good time and they'll come and get a good script. They were flying into the dark, really. It could have been nonsense. So casting Chris was a very, very big signpost and sort of saying, actually, this isn't the old nonsense that you might imagine it was, even though it wasn't, but um, that we're serious, that this is proper drama, proper scripts. And it worked. It absolutely worked. I approached Russell T. Davis. I emailed him and said, I know you're going to do this. I think you should think about me. Because I had acted a lot for adults and I wanted to do something for children. I wanted to try and try and learn a lighter way of, of being. I think I overpitched the comedy. Uh, if I had my time again, I would do the comedy very differently. But I think obviously where I did possibly succeed was in the tortured stuff. <laughs> surprise, <laughs> surprise. Oh, it's all about the writing in my opinion. But no, seriously, it's a massive team. It's hundreds of 
of people all pulling together and it's absolutely unique you know I've been very happy in all the productions I've ever worked in but Doctor Who is loved by the people who make it we get I think it's the kids you get kids watching it and you get kids responding you get kids loving it and that makes the people going into work work harder it really does it's, that's a massive responsibility you never want to let anyone down it does mean I'm over everything executive producer it means what you say goes is is too simple because it's collaborative it's like you, you're employing the people you love and trust and you're listening to their opinion so um it's never come down to like a final vote on something it's constant collaboration all the time talking to people and i i often think of it as like as transmitting actually i just transmit what i think the program should be meaning the tone of every episode and, and the feel of it even even going down to the, the textures and the colors of it it's like it's it's where drama goes wrong and where most drama goes wrong and actually where most drama is bland it's because everyone's got a slightly different opinion of what's happening on the page. And actually, you do need to be a bit ruthless and a bit Stalinist with that and make sure everyone's singing from the hymn same hymn sheet because then you get a beautiful choir. See what I'm like with metaphors? <laughs> I'm just marvellous with them today. Hopefully, it's going to be a, a programme that the family will watch together, like all the best television. I would like 8 to 12-year-olds to take me into their heart. I don't think I've got much of a chance with Tom Baker and John Pertwee fans. And I respect that, that fidelity, really. I respect that loyalty. I, pro I have it myself to Sean Connery as James Bond, but I'm hoping that eight to 12 year old children will, I'll be their first doctor and they'll love me the way people love Baker. They'll be watching me from behind the sofa, the futon. Yeah, I think I, it, it's frightening because it's so well, apart from the visual impact of the monsters and the brilliance of the creations, this is a very well written series and it's the psychology that's frightening, particularly for instance, when the doctor confronts the Daleks, there's a whole thing about, is the doctor actually as bad as the Daleks because he's, prepared to exterminate them willy-nilly. So the psychology is very well drawn and the children will listen to that as well as look. You know, If you make good television for children, the adults will come. That's the way I think about it. Well, I think it's easy to forget what a risk it was. And actually, Russell's always taken risks. Uh, following Queer as Folk with something like Bob and Rose, where you've got a gay man falling in love with a woman, it's a huge risk as, as, the, as the gay writer. Uh, and the same with Doctor Who. It was, um, I think, back in sort of 2003, 2004, it was perhaps considered by a lot of people as a bit of a joke fairly but nonetheless it was and uh, Russell brought it back and has turned it into I think uh, he would acknowledge even that a, a bigger success than, than anybody um, anticipated but uh, nonetheless a hell of a risk and, and, and as such has done an amazing job.